The Evermore podcast is now sponsored by WFST Total Compliance. WFST provides fire safety requirements UK-wide to prepare you and your employees should the worst happen. Do what you do best and visit wfst.co.uk today. Enjoy the episode. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the Evermore YouTube channel. It's Monday night. Me and Mark are back asking the same question we ask every Monday night. And thank fuck, Mark, this Monday, we're going to say, what's going on? We won a game at the weekend. Newcastle United won a game again. How are you doing, mate? Three points. Yeah, it does. It does yes. look a little bit better on the um, on the sh- on the sheet, doesn't it? When you when you've got a, a W next to your name, but uh, no, it's uh, it's nice to have a, I think, a more positive chat tonight than, than p- we've possibly had over the the last few weeks. Yeah, absolutely. No, that it's uh, it's it's always good to get a win, mate. And you know, Newcastle United back up to fifth. Two games in hand on Spurs, who will really hope do your typical Spurs thing and fall over like a bunch of wankers, which would be amazing. Uh, but yes, we're going to be talking a bit more about that on the Wednesday, about whether the top four race is back on. But tonight we've got a few things just to talk about, a little bit about the game, a little bit about some news around the game and, and some players who potentially you know, are going to be out for a couple of weeks. But we'll get stuck right into it, guys. Uh, just before we do, a little reminder, if you're new to the channel and you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. We'd love you to come and join us. We're on 2,550 something. Um, so, yeah, smash the button, no free content. <laughs> Round about that, Mark. I'm not, no Rachel Riley. Um, I wish I was, we get more subs. Um, so, yeah, smash that button, all free content. Uh, two two live shows, Mondays and Wednesdays, and pop up videos. And we just love talking about Newcastle and I don't charge you a penny for it. We are live tonight as well. Please jump in the comments. We've got a couple of you guys already in. BT and Roger were in early doors. Even to you guys. Gibbo is also in the house. My favourite handle, the noob gamer, is there as well. One day you are going to catch me out about that, mate. I think that's why he's designed that, really. So, so yes, we're all looking forward to chatting about Newcastle United. PDK is also there with a little cheeky bevy emoji. We'll love a bit of that. So, so let's get stuck right in then, Mark. I don't think there's there's any other place to start, really. You, you put him in the thumbnail. Alex the Great, Alexander Rizak, mate. What a fucking footballer this lad is. Tell me a little bit about how, what difference Alexander Rizak made to this Newcastle United side yesterday, mate. Yeah, I mean, it, it was all about his his energy yesterday, and, and we, we've seen a massive, I think, a massive lack of that from 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 Callum Wilson in recent weeks. Whether that's through form, injury, illness, whatever. But when when we've seen Isaac come in. He's looked. He's looked to run at people. He's looked to move. He's looked to to get beyond defenders. He's he's looked to run at defenders. From the minute the game started yesterday, he was on it, um, and his his energy, his pace, his his willingness to press. Um, I think he ended up with the with the most successful tackles yesterday, which just goes <laughs> to show what he was putting in, into the team. Um, he he was exceptional, um, and he ran himself into the ground for seventy minutes of the game. Um, and, and he sort of said himself, didn't he, that he, he left everything out there. Um, so he's he, he very much kind of stuck to the the Eddie Howe note that, that he, he couldn't play for 90 minutes. He couldn't play for 90 minutes because he left everything out on the, on the field. Um, but, yeah, he, he was brilliant. And, it, and his link-up with St. Maximum as well um, in the early stages of the game was, was exceptional. The two of them looked very, very good. Absolutely. I mean, I think what he gives us primarily, and this is no slight to Callum Wilson, who's been immense for Newcastle United, there's no doubt about that, but, but Alexander Rizak gave us everything that Wilson's not given us over probably the last yeah. two or three months. Hello to the cat there making a sly appearance on your shoulder. It's uh, it's just like Alexander Rizak, mate. Doesn't, you don't see it covered. It's just there like a flash. Um, he gave us everything that Wilson has struggled to give us. He, he gave us impetus, he gave us movement, he gave us he gave us the threat. I mean, you could see the Wolves defenders were genuinely shit themselves every time he came anywhere near them. I mean, as you said there, we're so used to Maxi beating the man and beating the man again and beating the man again. He didn't have to yesterday. He was able to put a pass down the line and this guy's pace was able to make that ball a good ball by pulling out wide. And the amount of times he pulled defenders out of position and he'd put those burners on. Um, I mean... The thought of this guy, if, it, if that's this guy not at his, his, his optimum fitness level, Mark, I mean, how good is this kid going to be 
when he's he's fully fit, firing, and, and he can play 90 minutes. I mean, how good is this lad going to be then <laughs> when he can play 90 yeah. minutes, man? I, I think it's a it, 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 you know it's exciting to to see if, if you know he comes back, he's he's fully charged, he's fully fit, he can run for 90 minutes. It's going to be tough because. The, the the amount of effort that, that Eddie Howe demands off his players is, is huge. The intensity, um, yeah. And, he, and, and he's referenced that as well. You know, he, he, he talked about the the amount of, that he's enjoying the amount that he has to put in um, for, for for playing for Newcastle. Um, but yeah, he's he just, he's going to be really exciting. He's, we've seen now that, you know, he's great on the deck. He's good in the air. Um, his movement's good. His pace is good. He, he's, he's sort of, Pretty much the, the almost the complete package. Um, so with a you know a little bit of a little bit more time in the league, a little bit more time to get used to to the you know Premier League defenders, the the pace, and he he certainly caught the the pace of the game really well. We've seen that right from the very beginning. Um, but he's just he, he's going to be be pretty special, I think. That's a great comment by Mark. It does remind me a lot of Thierry Henry with the with just that that dynamic movement, just that pace that comes almost comes from nowhere from a stand and start. Yeah, a lot of play, a lot of players have a. I mean, Willick's got a little bit about it as well. We're going to talk about Willick in a little bit, but it, it's almost like from a stand and start, it's just bang the burners are on and they're gone. They're away from any player. Whereas some players need to kind of build that speed up. You know, Isaac can just you know throw it on there like, like Marx is very similar to Thierry Henry. I mean, obviously, Christ, if he turns out to be half the player Thierry Henry was, I think we'll be doing all right, Mark. To be fair, but you know that header surprised me as well. To be honest, I mean, you know, he scored a header against Fulham, which was a great reactionary header, but this header was, I mean, uh, and Carragher even likened it to a Shira header. But what I loved about it was the little nudge on the defender just to get the space. And then the header, and yeah, I know you said it probably should have been a free kick, but but the head the header, I mean, that is a proper header, that isn't it? That that is a number nine centre forward header. That no keeper's getting that because he's put it right in the corner. Um, and then the Wolves keeper did all right to be fair. Yeah, exactly, Roger. You know, for someone who came, you know, said he was shit in the air. I mean, Mark, well, that's a great header. I mean, any centre forward would be proud of that, man. Yeah, that was as kind of Roger put there. That's a number nine's header. That's absolutely. That's not a wide player's header. That's not a, a you know number ten's header. That's a proper centre. That's an old school centre forwards header. Yeah, um, yeah it's a sheer header. It's a yes, sheer header. That's where he would score. Yeah. He, and and he showed his 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 willingness to kind of battle that little shove in the back. I thought love that. I, I do the, if that if that happens at any other place in the pitch, I'm sure it get, gets given as a free kick. But yeah. It's probably not enough to give a foul. I, I think I was being a little bit facetious, facetious <laughs> with it. Um, so yeah, but it's just it's a brilliant header. Um, yeah. You know, it's a. <laughs> and can we just can I just just point out as well the ball in from Trippier's free kick, who we've kind of questioned with set pieces and about I, I, I seconds did seconds be, before. I was just going to say thirty <laughs> seconds right. before he took that free kick. You text and said we've got to get some. Or we need somebody else on on, on free kicks, or you know, with yes. Madison coming in on in, in the summer to come and take over the free kicks. And or then he picks Prowse, one in like, or Ward Prowse, Prowse was there. Yeah, possibly, mate. Yeah, and Trippier just <laughs> Trippier's decided. To, yeah, Trippier has decided to cross the ball through my teeth. Up to Alexander Rizak's head, really, mate. So uh, well done, Kieran Trippier. But I thought Trippier was <laughs> class as well. To be fair, I mean the slip was unfortunate, but I think generally in in, in the game, I, I thought it was absolutely immense um, right throughout. You know, he he looked like the Trippier. I say the Trippier of old. Generally, he's been brilliant for Newcastle, but I thought he was back to his best Trippier as well in terms of his defensive positioning, his, his offensive play. Um, I mean, Wolves didn't offer a great deal. It's a great comment there, PDK as well. I think that Isaac's. Um, style does uh, definitely suit, or our style suits a more mobile centre forward in, in, in Alexander Rizak. But you're you're right, Mark. I mean, I think he was just the dynamic of him playing. Uh, you know, I, I, to be fair, Maxi was great as well. You know, Willock, we're going to talk about in a minute. Even Murphy, to be fair, who my exact words were: "It's rancid that Jacob Murphy starting the game in 2023 after the takeover, and he then proceeded to actually do all right to Jacob Murphy." Um, so I mean, there was there was so much pace in that side, wasn't there? To to to, to go at Wolves. I mean, w- Wolves offered very little. I mean, Traore went for a couple of little wonders with his, his you know his baby oiled arms, but n- nothing really came uh, came from it. Really, did it, mate? In terms of the Wolves attack. Well, I think that they probably created a little bit more than I think 
most anticipated. They don't create an awful lot as a general rule. They don't. No, there's not a lot of forward score but, goals there. But you, you look at what they ended up with. You know, Nick Pope has to make a few saves and make crucial yeah. saves too. Um, I think he was it three saves in the end that he, that he had to, to, to make. We'll come on to Nick Pope a little bit later on. Um, but they, they offered it, they offered a little bit. They they do lack in and around the box. I mean, they need a proper striker. Jimenez has gone right off the boil from what he used to is, be. after that head injury. He's never been the same. He, he's not. I think that the the player is still still sort of in there. I just think that they're not they're not creating the right sort of opportunities for him perhaps anymore. But um, Traore is so hit and miss. Uh, he can be absolutely exceptional, he, and he did really well early early on. And you thought, oh, there, there might be a bit of a challenge here. And he did put one decent ball in the box. I think if it was a Pudence, I think if he gambles early on, he probably gets gets a header in on goal. Or, or, or if he wasn't three foot one, <laughs> you might get a header yeah, on goal. I, I, I didn't realise. It wasn't until sort of later on. And, and he, I think Trippier was battling for him out for, for a throw in. And he went and sort of stood next to him. And even Trippier is like two or three inches taller. And they were like, Jesus Christ, he's tiny. It was like Ant Man and the Wasp. It was fucking was, I mean, we're, we're talking sort of. Alan Wright esque sort of size here, you know, three foot two. That's um, <laughs> it, it was it oh, was brilliant. But it was just if you can make Trippier look tall, you've got to be pretty short. Um, yeah. But uh, but no, it's that they don't. Like I say they don't offer an awful lot, but they did make a couple of good chances. And mm-hmm. and when called on, really, Nick Pope was there to to pull off the saves that he needed to. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, they're probably about <clears throat> maybe two or three decent players short in key positions of roles to, to, to make a good fist of it with a new manager in. You know, if they can, I mean, I think they'll struggle to keep a hold of, of Neves uh, in the summer. Um, you know, I think they are going to struggle to, to keep a hold of those guys. And is, is, is it Pedro as well? Um, the, the, the number seven, is that Pedro? Is it Pedro? What's it called? Um, Neves, Pedro Neto. Neto, that's it, mate. Neto never. Yeah, so Neto's another one who just come back from injury. Where I got Pedro from? That was a guy who used to play for uh, Chelsea, wasn't it? Um, but yeah, I think that it was his first time. Yeah, yeah, I was close. <laughs> I was close. The, 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 the couple of couple of decent players short, maybe of, of being in the top seven, possibly. So we'll have to see what they do in the summer. But yeah, I've got to pull this comment up from PDK. I've just remembered that. What the fuck was that corner? But that was probably the the part of the game where I just looked at the screen and said, "What the fuck." Like that short corner that Maxi and Trippier tried to come up with, it was reminiscent of that Henri and Perez penalty really. I don't know what the God. fuck was going on with that one. Maybe. Do you know what it is? We, we've screamed out though for weeks, haven't we? Do something different, do something different. Yeah. And they tried it. It didn't work, but at least they tried. Mm. And yeah, they terrible. Though. Whatever whatever they were supposed to do, they completely, they completely cocked it up. But at yeah. least it was an effort to try and do something different. Mm. And I think that was pretty much the Newcastle Newcastle's plan from the off. Yeah. Um, I've never seen to maximum hit so many early balls. Oh, How many times did he did he sort of knock the ball over the top? Um, and and Isaac was onto it. Those two really early on w- were on it. Um, and I I don't think I've ever seen Maxi play like that. Um, no, he reverted more Different. a little bit to type. Yeah, he reverted a little bit to type later on. Um, when I think when Isaac had slowed a little bit and he wasn't making those sort of lung bursting runs through the defence. But early on, they had that plan to to, to sort of catch the, the defenders high and and have um, Isaac run through and behind them. But, but Maxi picked the ball up, look as if he's going to run and then just play the ball. And it caught them out time after time. Yeah, it might be a bit of truth of what Gibber was saying there. I think maybe he is listening to Howard. I think he's trying not to lose the ball as much. But but I mean, if you go back to that interview that Maxi had, was it was it last season? We talked about when you surround me with good players, um, I'll be able to find the passes and stuff. He's got a player there in Alexander Rizak who can make those runs. And it, it's almost like they have some kind of a little telepathic link going on, isn't it, where Maxi knows where Rizak's going to be. And you throw Joe Willock's energy in there too, which we're going to come on to in a minute. You know, that's that's a real dangerous um, attacking trio. We saw it when they came on against City, even the best team in the league, arguably. Um, they gave City a rattle, didn't they, when they came on last week? You know, the three of them come on. Isaac got right in behind them pretty quickly. And uh, you could see them thinking, Jesus Christ, this is a different kettle of fish to what we've, 
what we've had in the first half. You know, and I think I think when Isaac went off, I was I'm going to use the word annoyed, but I know he was tiring, but I felt like he had another 10 or 15 minutes in him. And I didn't think the game was out of sight at that point to take him off and bring Wilson on. And I, 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 I don't know about you, Mark, but I just don't think Wilson offered anything really when he come on. I, just, I don't remember him really doing anything that made me think, all oh, right, he's done well there. Or he's, I, he just, I, I, especially because of how good Isaac was in the first half. I just think Wilson just, you know, came on and he was just a body, really. He didn't really do anything. Am I being a bit harsh or? Oh, you got mute, Mark. You got mute. Are you mute? Sorry. Sounds yes, I was, I was trying to mute out the sound of the cat before. Um, <laughs> he, Wilson played 22 minutes and touched the ball seven times. And that's sort of all you kind of need to know. It's not yeah. It's not horrendous. It's about the, the right sort of average number of touches for him. Yeah. Um, but he, he's not as involved as, as Isaac is going to be. They're not. They're totally different players. You, you're going to get something mm. else. Um, I guess the comment about Isaac coming off a little bit early. Look, if he's tired, he has. He is still on his way back from injury. You don't want to push it. You don't want to rush too much and, and push him too much because then you end up in breaking down, True. and then you're stuck again. So if you can give him seventy, give him eight. You know, seventy-five, eighty minutes next week. Or on Friday this week, isn't it? Um, and then go for you know ninety after the maybe it's after the international break. Um, then that's that's a much more sensible approach. I do think the substitutions changed the game an awful lot. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for this. I was waiting for this. Uh, the, the the get rid of the cat comments, but it's, it's took a while actually. And to be fair, you know, it's uh, it's been a long, long time but since uh, someone's actually said that. I'm I was going to say I'm amazed <laughs> it's taken so long for somebody to suggest that, but you know, he's uh, he's he's got his little personality and he's he's a. Bad yes. shit, crazy. You need to you need to drug his milk or something, mate. Like Mr. T, you need like put something like a sedative in there, so he just goes to sleep, wakes up on the podcast. Just, just to put, point out to the RSPCA, if you are listening, that I won't be doing that. Mark does not drug cats, <clears throat> not at all, not at all. Yeah. Uh, no, just joking. Uh, yeah, so I, I think I think uh, I, sp I suppose the concern for Rizak, I mean, I'm looking forward to Friday, and I'm looking forward to see what he does against Forest because I mean, they leave loads of spaces in behind. And I think Isaac could absolutely destroy them. You know, Forrest will be shitting. They're probably thinking, Christ, I wish Wilson was playing the way he's playing. But Isaac will be a total different threat for them. And I think he'll really, he'll really give them a serious, a serious doing over, hopefully, um, you know, uh, on Friday night. But it, it is, um, is Sweden playing? And is Isaac going to get called up? That's my worry. Because last time he went off, um, that's when he got the injury, wasn't it? The leg injury when Isaac went away with Sweden, wasn't it? I don't know if they're playing, huh? Um, he in did, the squad? yeah. It was Sweden. Oh, it, was, it was in the training Sweden. camp. He done his leg, didn't he? I'm just, I'm just trying to think what he'd. Um, I don't know if anybody can tell us in the comments below whether whether uh, Sweden it, it are playing. was. They play Belgium in Euro qualifiers on the 24th. They then play Azerbaijan mm. on the 27th. So they they are due to play. I would imagine they've probably not been announced yet. Mm. Um, yeah, that, that's that's what would concern me. Would be if it goes I'd probably international. Yes, it'll be this week. Yeah, that's a concern. Yeah, you, you worry will will Newcastle pull him? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, sorry, Roger. That, that I'm just I'm just trying to think because this is what happened last time. To be honest with you, mate, it's, just, it's a little bit of a concern. And uh, Gibber was saying that Sweden play Friday and Monday. I mean, he, he is he is Sweden's main man, isn't he? Um, you know, so uh, just a little bit, a bit of a concern. Then, like you say, do, do they pull oh, him? God. Do they say no? He's not fit enough. Or do they? Limit is that why how was saying he's not fit enough for ninety minutes? Maybe possibly. Maybe trying to that throw him off, throw him off doing it. That's possibly when you when you play the longer term game into the international break. That's probably really sensible management to say mm. something like that. So they they will possibly not um, not neither not pick him because they can't be sure, or as Ian says, there he might the pull pull out because he's not quite fit. Um, yeah, but if, he, if he's fit and playing in the Premier League and scoring, and the Swedish manager calls him up, does he? You know, passionate player for his country, obviously wants to be the man. Does he, you know, does he say he'll play? Look, if 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 it's you or me, you don't turn it down. Do you know what I mean? It, it, exactly. If 
if I'm if I'm picked for my country, there's no there's no chance I'm I'm turning down unless I'm injured. I'm not going to turn out injured down injured that court. out injured and out out of um, yeah. I think if you if you if you're carrying a niggle where there's a risk, yes, you, you maybe you, you maybe step aside. But look, if it, if he's if he's fit and playing, I think he probably goes. I think he you probably look at it given the two games that they've got. He probably only plays one game and probably sits on the bench the second. Mm. You know, he, he maybe he plays against Belgium and then and then sits out against Azerbaijan, um, who, who, with all the you know goodwill in the world, they're not the greatest football team in the world, are they? Um, no. So we still be Scotland. No, no, my fucking look. <laughs> <laughs> no said. No said. Vanuatu would probably beat Scotland to be to be honest with you. Does he work for Aldi? Does he work in Aldi at the weekends and just plays Azerbaijan <laughs> internationals? Does he? Fucking hell. Don't get me started on that, bollocks. Hey, man. But no, I, don't, like, it, 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 I guess it is a concern. But then you can label that at any player if they're going to get called up by the national team. When, you, when you've got into this, getting back into a little bit of form, maybe again, if you if you beat Forest on Friday, two two wins on the trot, you, you take that into the, the end of season you, or you go away for this break in Dubai. And bring back some good form into running into the Manchester United game, the West Ham game. Um, is it Brentford after that, and then Villa? So you don't want to bring anybody back injured, but there's always the risk. You know, the, I'm going to guess the likes of Shaw um, will will be there. Um, Bruno, will Bruno will Bruno get called up? A Brazil playing? I'm actually not sure. I don't know. I, really I, don't, I, don't know Bris, I don't know. Brazil are playing. I don't know. I don't, um, I don't, th- I don't think Bruno gets in. I don't think Bruno gets not. in the squad. To be honest with you, I, I, I think they mentioned that, didn't they? That he, he'll probably get dropped, um, given the fact he's been kind of in and out and stuff. Um. Yeah, possibly. I think Brazil are playing a, a friendly against Morocco. Um, yeah. So I think that's where that's where they are next. Um. So that's on the Saturday. I think that's the only game. Does he does he get a call up for that? Probably not. Oh, he didn't make the squad. There you go. There's some comments in there. So oh, right, I didn't, okay. I, to be, I'll be honest with you. I didn't realise the squad had been selected. So that's uh, yeah. There, there's me. So thank you for that. Um, so I, I guess that that's a good thing. Is it? Bruno's looked off. I, th- I think he's looked like he's carrying. An ankle problem. I, th- I, um, I think the ankles. I think the ankles a big problem. I really do. I think he's got that taped up um, under that sock, mate. I really do think that. Yes. So it, it gives him. It gives him another couple of weeks of, of recovery time after after the Forest game, doesn't it? So I yeah. think if he, if if he, you know, he comes through unscathed against Forest, he's then got two weeks off to to, to kind of chill and, and rest that ankle. Yeah, I think Brazil. The lads, some of the lads are saying that as the yeah. coincidence there, Brazil are looking at the kids. I think you know calling them up, but but yeah, I mean obviously Isaac Isaac was class, and, and talking about Bruno being a little bit off. Um, thankfully, um, even though Bruno was off and Joe Linton was missing, there was one player who really stood out for us, and, and that was was Joe Willock. I think a few of you have already mentioned about Joe Willock being man of the match. So I pulled up this was the heat map that the club instantly put out after his performance. You could see that he was absolutely everywhere. There, I've just I've just got the old sofa score stats up as well in the background here. So so Joe Willock had played 90 minutes, he had 50 touches, his pa- passing accuracy was 88%, two key passes um in terms of his shots, two shots on target, uh, dribbling attempts he got uh, four out of his six were successful, ground jewels he won six out of eleven, um clearances two, um tackles two, interceptions one. Um, so he was just absolutely brilliant, Mark, wasn't he? To be fair, Joe Willock. I, I think that's probably the best I've seen Joe Willock play in a long time in a black and white shirt. And uh, my God, we needed that, didn't we? But Joe Willock missed, mate. What a performance! Yeah, that's that's him fit, isn't it? That's him back to oh, to, to his proper match fitness and in, in his his high, you know, his high energy running, his press, um, he, you know, his willingness to to run beyond, his willingness to get involved and, and track and and break up play and sort of do the, the that sort of Joe Linton role that we've seen yeah. um Joe do so so well. He 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 played that well. And to be honest with you, I'm, I'm surprised by the passing stats stats if I'm, I'm if I'm honest, because I actually thought he was on the ball a little bit more 
than more actually than that. And 22 accurate passes, apparently, out, out of that. Yeah, yeah. But, but only 25 overall. I, th- I honestly, yeah. I would, I would, I would have said that it was was at least you know 35 yeah. that he'd been on. I um, like that lock, was, lockdown Willick because <laughs> he was absolutely yeah. class in lockdown. Yeah, he? Uh, he was. He was. Yeah, he was exceptional and and absolutely my man of the match. Um, I thought he was uh, as well as he's acted early on, um, and I thought he he was the difference for the first sort of forty minutes. St. Maximum probably for the first 30, 35 minutes was exceptional as well. I think overall for the full ninety. Willock was was head and shoulders, I think, above everybody else on the field. I just thought he was he was back to his very best. And you know, if you you then got the the the, the good fortune of being able to, to welcome back Joe Linton back um, yeah. into the squad soon, and then and then that that's another option. I mean, this is strange. Look at the options that Newcastle has to bring off the bench and things. So, um, but no, Willock yeah. was was exceptional and good to see because. You know, he's another one that looked tired. Um, he, he looked like he's, he'd sort of run run himself into the ground a little bit. So, yeah, brilliant. Mm. It's a great comment there from, from Andy as well. I mean, I mean, Joe Willock, he does have that. Out of all the midfielders, none of them have what Joe Willock has. Joe Litton arguably does, but doesn't do it consistently enough, I think. Whereas Joe Willock has that bravery to try and beat a man, and he has that deceptive pace. People still come and get so close to him thinking that he hasn't got pace. And he, he pulls them in and then he just puts the burners on and, and he's gone. And, and, and as Andy says there, he feels like he's been around forever and he's only 23. I mean, you know, no. if you think, of, we've talked about this before, Mark, the player that arrived from Arsenal for 20 million, I think, T for Lisa before, looks an absolute bargain now. But <clears throat> the player who came here was a goal-scoring midfielder who, you know, let's be honest, he kept us in the league with his goals, his 8-8 eight and eight or whatever it was that he scored. He, he arrived late in the box. He was a good finisher. He was a natural kind of goal-scoring midfielder. Eddie Howe has turned him into an overall excellent midfield player. He's got pace. He, he, his interception is very good. His positional sense is great. You know, he, he gets involved in the game defensively and offensively. The only thing I think that's missing from Joe is the goals. And I think if they can come back, maybe not as consistent as they were when he was that pure attacking threat, but if he can chip in with, what, what maybe even about six or seven goals a season... I think you know you've got the complete package there, mate. I mean, twenty-three years old. Yeah, I'm. I'm also of mind to say that the, the job that Eddie Howe has done with Joe Willock is almost as good, if not better, a job than than, than that of, of Joe Linton, and that's probably Bargain a little is. bit. Uh, look, the, the transformation of Joe Linton has been nothing but nothing but sensational. But I think the difference in 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 Joe Willock, when you when you look at the fact that he he played very much as a forward based attacking midfielder under under Bruce, he, he sort of played in that role for for Arsenal beforehand. Um, but he's he's changed his his overall game has completely um, changed now to to this all action midfielder who is is absolutely fine to. To come back and muck in and get involved in the in the in the dirty work at the back, he'll press, and he's very much, and he's got energy to burn. So he will he will press all day long, and we've we've seen that throughout the season. Um, and but he, he has the quality that I mean, a little bit more consistent, I think, in in that regard. That sort of in the forward places. Look at the go back to Leicester last season. That run down the left hand side. Oh, goal for Bruno's yeah, for Bruno's header. So he, he, but he's done that a couple of times where he's burst down the left hand side, and he's got that in his lock. You said it before, his pace at times where he he just turns on those afterburners and he's gone. Um, so he he has almost everything in his locker. It would you know you just like to see a little bit more of an end product for him. Mm. Um, but I mean, he's got what two goals and three assists this season, um, which isn't. It, which isn't a horrendous return, um, but you would like to see a little bit more from him. Um, certainly, certainly in a goal scoring form. If you're you're talking about your midfield three, yeah, or him playing as one of the four, the, the sort of the more forward players, he he has mm. to he has to chip in with it with a little you know with a few more goals. But he he he's been he's been brilliant. Um, yeah. That like I say, that transformation in him has, has been exceptional. 
I think I think uh, Roger mentioned it before about Bruno, Joe Linton and Willick when, when everybody's fit and available, probably for the Man United game. And it, it, it might sound a bit unfair to Sean Longstaff because he's been superb this season, Sean. You can't doubt his work ethic and, and what he's done for the side, you know, both offensively and, and defensively as well. But I think when you're looking at the players there, I mean, you know, obviously Shelby's long gone now. Um, you know, Gordon's injured. We'll come on that in a minute. But I see Gordon Moore as a, as a wide attacking option as opposed to a, as a midfield three option. So if He's you look at those four, yeah. exactly. If you look at those four and three, fit, on form and available, I think you have to go Bruno, Joe Linton and Joe Willock. And, and I think I'd argue that midfield on form and fit and firing is, is one of the best midfields in the league. I think for energy, for creativity, for steel, um, you know, in terms of the defensive and the offensive side and, and the ability to transition from one to the other. Um, I don't think you'll get many midfielders that can do do both sides of it as effectively as, as those guys do. And the next question for Joe Willick, maybe I'm being a bit uh, hyperbolic here, but is he unlucky not to be even discussed in an England capacity, given what he can do? When he's fit and he's playing like that, I think I think he needs to show that little bit more consistency, and that sounds daft considering the consistent season that he's had. But but I think in terms of his attacking qualities, he's he's sort of that hybrid at the moment, isn't he? Where he's very good at going forward, and he'll give you he'll give you the defensive work. Give you the cover back as well, yeah. And I yeah. think he certainly in an England. He has to pick. He, he has to, to show, pick, a, pick a position. Do you think? Before he gets England recognition, he has to be an attacking midfielder or a defensive midfielder. No, I, I, I'm not sure it's that. I just think he needs to he needs a little bit more output. If he can start adding another three or four goals to him by the end of the season, another three or four assists, he's sitting in and around the six, seven, eight goals, eight assists mark. He, he should be a shoe in for the England squad. Yeah, that's yeah. what you're looking for. For that kind of play, he has to have the output at the end of it. And he's just. He's not got there yet, but as everybody's kind of pointing out, he's 23, he's still learning. He's, he's learned how to play a different role now for Newcastle, yeah. um, and, and he's adapted to it very well. Yeah, and, and, and as Tifa Lee says there, you know, in England are stacked in that position, to be fair. You know, that, that is something that they, they do have a lot of players, um, obviously, in, in that particular role. But, I mean, it's, it's great to see him play. And as as coins as they can play on the wing too, exactly. You know, in Eng England aren't, aren't stacked with left-sided wingers. Well, let's be honest, they never have been. Um, you know, so Speak I, I think it's. So I was just going to say, speaking of wingers, can we just <laughs> just comment on 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 that? As I didn't well, see that. I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. Genuinely, it took a while. It, was, it took a while to do it, didn't he? <laughs> it was just yeah. I mean, it was brilliant. I mean, like he's he's got that that. The arrogance to do stuff like that. So yeah, it was. It doesn't always look so good. Um, no, but yeah, it was. Um, that Palace was one funny. was the worst one. That Palace one yeah. was by far the worst one because that was just no nothing or, or now really just didn't have to do it. But it was his no. birthday. He maybe maybe had a cheeky talk on the pipe around the corner or something before kick off possibly. When Eddie Howe wasn't watching, Mad Dog Tin will probably give him one. I went, Shh, don't tell Eddie. Uh, then it's your birthday, mate. Get this in you. Uh, and that's why he kept passing instead of running to people. But uh, but no, it, it was great to see the lads playing well. And I think, you know, if Joe Willick can bring that energy and that quality to the Forest game, you know, he could be a huge impact in that. And then obviously, you know, we we, we end with a good uh, couple of results in that Champions League picture. Then, you know, bring on Man United and we'll come back, who are also missing their best midfield after a shit house of a tackle uh, and a red card, mate. So uh, old uh, Casemiro won't be playing, will he, in that game, mate? So that's a bonus. No, and and, and the, the, see that again. This that, that frustrates that frustrates me in, in in a sense because how is that a red card? And I'm not saying it's not a red card, but hear me out. How is that a red card? But the one he puts on Joe Linton a couple of weeks ago, not. Mm, mm. It's, it's almost an identical. One in the challenge. final, the one in the final. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It's, it was studs up into his, into halfway up his shin. It's the same challenge. There was another one given on. Was it Saturday? I can't remember which game it was now. That was an almost identical challenge that wasn't given as a red card. And interesting enough, it was the same referee that was involved. But they, I think it was the referee that was on VAR on Sunday had told him to go and have a look at it. Whereas when he was on the uh, on on the Saturday, he was involved in it. The yeah. VAR didn't tell him to go and look at the. It was just. Is, you, is that is that Casemiro got a four game ban? 
Because yes. that, that second round, oh, you fucker. It Ouch. is. Oh. And, and I know we're going to come on to, to the potential. Yeah. That, I know you spoke about it yesterday, but... The segue is revved up, man, don't worry. Very, is... very nearly lost, lost somebody <laughs> for four games too. Absolutely. Just a quick one on the referee at the weekend, actually. There's a few guys in the comments who would have been at the game. Um, obviously, something happened in the crowd and, and, and our own PK cleared up for us in the chat group that it was a lad who collapsed and I think Trippy was trying to get the referee's attention. I saw that on the TV um, and apparently the, the referee was a bit of a cock about it, just kind of shook his head or something like that and then Lascelles, Jamal Lascelles, actually had to stay with with the lad until medical attention came. And massive respect to Jamal Lascelles for that, you know, for uh, for, for doing that. Mate, and I think that's a bit poor from the referee, isn't it? Because this is happening a lot more frequently now. People are, you know, are getting some bother in the crowds, and, and normally, normally you get a better response than that. But I don't think the referee was great, was he? No, it's not a good look at all, is it? But is that a direction to the referees that to, to carry on with, with play while stuff like that's going on? No, we poor, saw that, isn't it? Well, it is. When you consider we saw it at St. James's Park last season, wasn't it? Was it last season? Yeah. Where they had to run the, the defib across across the pitch to the stand yeah. to, to go and help the, the guy out. So, look, if, if it's... If that's going on in the stand, that that's a distraction to the game, and that that has to be the priority. Uh, yeah. Is is somebody's health in that regard? If that person needs needs that 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 work, then then the game should should take second second place. Yeah, well, T. Felice saying there to rule the prems brought in to not stop games for medical stuff from the crowd. But as you, you rightly say there, Lee, that you know the refs have got to show some kind of morals there, and then just some kind of. Empathy and compassion, you know, for for, for well, the fans. And, really. and the the other side of that is that the player's got to go. I mean, at that point, Trippy is going to go and take a corner, and in that in that area, of the the play where where that that fan is is in distress, mm-hmm. that's not a good thing for for any player to go and have to do. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, but you shouldn't be expected to go and take a corner while something like that is going on. You you pause. Oh. I'm sorry, you pause the game. And as Ian says there, the ref said to play on his whistle, cock, absolutely, mate. I couldn't agree with that anymore. But yeah, I mean, that, that that's poor. We, we need to be better than that. But but as you said there, talking about red cards and potential red cards, we're going to move We're going to move on to a certain Mr. Nick Pope, who, you know, let's get right into this, Mark. Um, for you, is Nick Pope lucky to not get a second red card and give away a penalty for that tackle on, on, uh, on Jimenez? Yeah, he has got away with one massively there. I think I, I I said it yesterday in the in the comments in the post match. I think Jimenez goes looking for it, but Pope obliges, and Pope goes sort of wait um, sort of hip in to to kind of disrupt him, and he does foul him. And I'm sorry yeah. that that should have been a penalty, and that probably should have been a red card. And that yeah, would have yeah. been Nick Pope missing for four, four games as well. Mate, so honestly, he I, has I, got away with it. I don't know what he's thinking. I mean, um, New Gamer says there, red, red all day for him. Roger says that, uh, shoulder lovable. Uh, BT says Pope was lucky. I mean, it's just Botman hits the ball back to him. It's awful touch, dreadful touch. Um, and and he, he, he just gets all over the place. I mean, I mean him and S, to be fair, makes a bit of an arse of it too because a striker who's confident on form and rare and just knocks it in the back of the net instantly doesn't even need to try and do what Jimenez was trying to do but he tries to run it a bit closer to the goal because he doesn't fancy himself and then Pope does the you know the hip check on him and, and puts but because he's kind of coming from behind to the side I think it's a hundred percent a penalty and a red card and I think if if the guy on VAR had more balls I think I think they would have went to the monitor and I think they would have sent them off. And as you rightly said, then that, that changes the game, doesn't it, really? Because the keeper's oh, yeah. gone. You know, Massively. we haven't scored yet. <laughs> you know, I'll say scored. this to anybody that, that, that doesn't think it, and I, and I think Ian's put it in the comments there. Put it at the other end of the field, and then how do you feel about that, it? Yeah. I said that in the post-match. <clears throat> if that was the Wolves keeper, we're screaming for that. Absolutely screaming. I'm not sure if VAR did look at it, BT. I think yeah. if they did, did they look at it, Mark? Did they? I think I think they said the check had, the check was complete on the on the TV. Um did they have Netflix on another screen? With the, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> to be honest with you, it was they must have done, but I look, it's it was an odd decision. Um yeah. and, and for to, to not have 
for them not to have even got the referee to go and look at it again um, is odd. And yeah, I think Tifa Lee's put there didn't make a clear and obvious error. Well, yeah, it looked like it to me. I I I I disagree there. I look, I I think I think Nick Pope is a very very lucky boy, and I think that Liverpool game has got in his head. Yeah, um, and, and it definitely has. And there's very much there's a, there's a, there's a huge nervousness about him every time the ball gets played back to his to his feet, and he. He took one or two touches that were off. Yeah, brilliant. I'm, that's harsh on Stevie because I'm absolutely positive Stevie Wonder would do a better uh, job. I, I think Stevie would have given a pen. I do. I think Stevie would have given a pen for that. What 100. Just that to, to coin Stevie says, don't uh, wonder. He, he, Stevie don't wonder. To coin says it, it looked like uh, in real time, but looking back, and he thinks it was a dive, zero contact. What do you what do you think about that, mate? I think I think there's definite contact there. Like I said. I thought yesterday. I thought I thought Jimenez went looking for it as he went in for the the challenge. I, I, I definitely think he, he looked looked for it, but but Pope obliged. Pope made the contact, and and at that point, it's a penalty. I, I mean, I I am the biggest goalkeeper union member there is. You know, I, I would pretty much always stick up for a keeper, but I'm, I I can't at that point. I, I, I agree. He does. He does jump into him. He does go he into him to, to look yeah. for it. But, but for me, it, it's then Pope that initiates the contact. So, uh, yeah, he's look. He's he's lucky. He wasn't sent off. It wasn't a penalty. Um, he got away with it, and and then he's got a a chance to try and get another game away from from that and away from the Liverpool game where he can he can get back to, to his best. And I think those saves are later on in the game as well. We'll, we'll, we'll I think Ian, Ian we'll just said that. Some, some, I mean, the, the save from the free kick was was brilliant and, and there was a few other um, chances as well where, where you know, he, he did show his, his, his quality as a shot stop. And, you know, people are saying he's not very good with his feet. I mean, he's actually been okay most of the season. It's just that Liverpool game rattled him. Um, and, you know, and, and, and technically it was his hands that he wasn't very good at because he was 40 yards out of the goal. But, yeah, moving on, Roger, moving on. But, you know, it didn't cost us the game, you know, so we're, no. we're not going to dwell on it too much. But, yeah, he, I, I do hope that he sorts he sorts out whatever's up here and gets that away, you know, because he doesn't need to have that because he's a brilliant goalkeeper and he's, he's been a key part in, in, in what's got us to fifth in the league, hasn't he, Mark? He, he absolutely has. I, I hope that, and, I, and I'm absolutely sure that, that Eddie and the, the the coach and staff will sit him down and say, "Look, you didn't cost us. Look, put it out of your head. I know it's difficult because, and, and just work on that. That first touch has got to be worked on because um, there's two or three times we've, we've seen that where he just his first touch is heavy. I mean, it's brick wall like at times, um, yeah. and it does just bounce off him. So he, he's just got to he's got to work on that a little bit more." But generally speaking, he's 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 done that that job very well. He's he's, you know, when when the ball's been played back to him, he's not looked too shaky. He's not looked bad. We've, I said at the start of the the, the season when he signed, like he's not as bad with his feet as people make out. Mm. I've been kind of, you know, made to look a, a little silly over the last couple of weeks. But but over, if you go over the whole season, he's not been too bad. He's had his moments, but then every keeper does. Look at Allison and, and Edison. They, yeah. they do very similar things, and, and nobody starts going well. You know, he, he, he they, they shite with their feet. It, it happens. Yeah, I mean, you know, to be fair, like I said, just 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 one last um, one last bit on this. I think the defenders could do with playing a lot more forward passes than back to Pope. It does go back to Pope a lot, and I know a lot of play starts at the back and, and works its way through the team and the transitions and the lines. But a lot of the time, you know, the midfielders and the defenders can can, can make themselves available for the forward pass. And we don't need to pass it back to Pope as much. Maybe give him a little less time with the ball at his feet over the next few games and just let him just let him get that confidence back up. Do you know what I mean? It's just uh, I think that that's to me that that would be what I would hope that Eddie Eddie and Jason Tindall um you know drill drill into the lads, you know, in training mate. Yeah, I think part of the part of the going backwards a little bit more. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that for for that chunk of games, Bruno wasn't there. Yeah, yeah, and they True. didn't have the outlet. To, no, so so where you would normally see Botman's first pass go forward, he, he didn't have really have that option. So his next option was to to look sideways and some and, and to look backwards a little bit more. Um, 
but that goes for everybody in that regard. So the ball was 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 traveling backwards, probably more so than the normal. Not massively, but it, it does it, it, it would have would probably shown the stats. Um but I think the I think they're overall feeling now. So we I guess like as Roger said, move, moving on. Because you, you take oh, the, you for take, a cup of tea. He's had enough. You take the <laughs> You take the positives from the win now, and you you sit him down. And you go, look, it didn't cost us. We we'll move on. We we go into the next game. You played very well. Take that, and we'll we'll go on, and you get a good result against Forest. Then it's two games, and 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 nothing, nothing bad's happened at that point. So yeah, you you just gotta you just have to put it behind you, and you just have to keep working on it. Well, let's put it behind us and let's move on to, to, to the next bit we're going to talk about. So, a bit, a bit of kind of um, good news, bad news, really. I mean, uh, Anthony Anthony Gordon was talking to a lot of the media about just how how much he's enjoying, enjoying his time in Newcastle United and how, you know, uh, welcome he's felt, you know, by the fans, by the, by the coach and by the players. Um, he seemed like he, this was in the lead up to the, to the game. He was obviously excited to be involved in the game and then he, he was... There was talk about player a player or two that hadn't trained all weekend. I think Anthony Gordon was one of those. He picked up an ankle injury against City, and it's going to rule him out for three weeks, Mark, which is disappointing. We'll come back to that in a second. But but he was talking to a lot of media, and I mean, there's already been talk about this with Gordon. So Eddie Howe already said he came to the club and he was short of fitness. Now we all know there's fitness and there's Eddie Howe fitness, <laughs> so they're very very two different uh, two different bits there. But. He was he was quite honest and brutal about about Everton about how how he feels like the the kind of tread him and just some of the stuff he said here, Mark, to say that it did hurt me. He said, "I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a 22 year old lad. I'm not going to handle every situation in life perfectly. But as a club um, with thousands of people working for them, um, he says, uh, you know, after the part I played to keep them up, I want the players, player, managers, player of the year." Uh, for them not to show me any credit or thank me, it hurt me a little bit. I mean, I mean, Everton are a basket case of a club, but that is pretty poor, isn't it, for for a lad who's been there since he was eleven year old in the academy, um, or whatever, just to not even give him a thank you really for what he did last last season for them, keeping them in the league because they should have went down last season by all accounts, mate, because it was shit, wasn't it? I just think it says an awful lot about the club, doesn't it? They just, yeah. it's an awful, awful club at the moment, and. It, it it doesn't surprise me at all, and 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 when you are that homegrown lad and you have performed pretty well for them, then you you give the you give the kids some credit, and and that, and that makes that makes the decision to leave your boyhood club a lot easier. And people yeah. said, well, you know, why would you, why would you choose to leave the club that you've been at since you were young? That's exactly why, because you don't yeah. get that level of support, and you'll get that. He'll absolutely get that in Newcastle. Um, so it's it, it is like you said, basket case of a club. They're they're absolutely awful at the moment. Maybe Dice it, yeah. will turn, will help to turn that round. But yeah, they're just they're they are a bit of a shambles. Yeah, I mean, there, there was another thing that he said because he was talking about you know how Eddie how has obviously pulled him and spoke to him and told him about his role in the team and how he sees him playing and and, and everything else. And what, what he said was he can express himself more here because he said at Everton he spent a lot of time on the halfway line or tracking back was the primary goal. He says, but here the manager says to him, I want you to get on the ball and I want you to express yourself and I want, want you to add, you know, bring your quality to the game. And to be honest, it's it's really gotten for the lad that he's that he's picked up this knock. Um, because he, he, the little cameos we've seen of him, mate, he's, he's looked really good, hasn't he? You know, like I know he, he, he went missing a little bit in City, but maybe if he picked up that knock early on in the City game, it could have affected him. But the cameos that we've seen him before, you know, slipping two lovely through balls to Wilson, I think if Isaac's on the end of them, they're in the back of the net, but by the way, Isaac played at the, the weekend. Um, but it's a real shame for Gordon, but hopefully it's only three weeks, Mark. Do you still think he's got a big part to play in, in, in yeah. the squad till the end of the season? Yeah, of course. I, I think he, he, look, he gives you a much a much better option than than you've had attacking wise previously. Um, yeah. The the attacking options before have been um, <laughs> that that was in response to um, to BT and T for Lee's comments. Um, yeah. 
So yeah, like when you've when you've had you go into to previous games early in the season and you've had the likes of of Fraser and Ritchie and, and Murphy, and to be fair to Murphy, he, yes, he he did very well this week. But when those are your options to come off the bench, or those are your options to change things up from from um, Almiron or, or Saint Maximam or uh, Willock down that left hand side, for for example, is is a huge option to to have to be able to to change things around and. Look, he he looks absolutely like he's coming ready to ready to yeah. you know to, to perform. Got um, a point to prove, think, isn't he? I think I think he's got a point to prove to yeah. a lot of people. And I think very much in the attacking sense, yeah, we talked about it when he when he signed about the what he what he gives you into in terms of his defensive um, qualities because we we likened him at that point to the way that um, the way that Almiron plays. Um, <laughs> so because Almiron will happily come back, and, and you see at times Almiron's sort of average position is almost at the halfway line because he tracks back so much, he comes and helps out. And Gordon will do that, but I think for, for Newcastle, I think the, the idea is that he will play a forward face, you know, a forward base role without the needs to have to come back as much as he's had to before. Um, and you're right, he's got PDK, he's got he's got back to base. 22 as well. as well. Him and Willick, 22 years old, they can get better and better and better yeah. and stronger. And you know that the future of those guys is is really promising, isn't it? Especially when you get a Champions League and stuff, you know, in terms of you know longevity of these players, you know, they, they, they could really, you know, evolve as players, you know, if we do get to the Champions League, maybe, which is massively impressive. But yeah, I'm gutted for the lad that, that he's injured, Mark. But one thing that he said was great was you know, he talked about the the, you know, the fans giving him a lift home from the Metro Centre and stuff like that. And he just <laughs> yeah. said it was it was just class, you know. And, and the, the the interviewer, I think it was Andy Sixsmith, I think actually, who was a really good guy, who was him. And, and, and he just said, "That's just so Newcastle, isn't it?" And, and and Gordon was laughing. He said, "Yeah, it is. It's just so Newcastle." And he went, "But I love it." He said, "It's it's great." And he really seems to have taken the club and the fans, you know, to his heart really. And he he, he actually seems like this. Two, he even he even commented on this. He said, "It's two different sides to him." He said. Off the pitch, he's totally different to what you see on the pitch. He said, on the pitch, I'm aggressive and I want to win. And he said, I can get a little bit, you know, wound up. He said, off the pitch, he said, I'm quite a chill guy. I like, I like a laugh and a giggle. And he's always smiling when he's talking. And, you know, it's almost like when you saw Bellamy. I think Bellamy was just that way everywhere, wasn't he, really? I think he'd start fighting the phone box, Bellamy. But but I think Gordon has that, that, that switch that flicks when he gets on the pitch, isn't it? And he just turns into that player. But when he's off the pitch, he seems like a top lad, doesn't he? And and kind of that's what you want, isn't it? You want the yeah. you want the competitiveness of a player. You want the the little bit of bite that they have. That, um, that is, yeah, that is amazing by PDK. Wow, fucking hell! That is, yeah, you forget how young they are, don't you? Like, no, there's there's a, there's a good core of that squad now that that should be around for five six years, and you get the very best yeah. of them. Um, but Bruno's twenty twenty four, you know, twenty four. Um, thing, yeah. So you've you've got the best the best of them, uh, you know, in the next few years. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Bellamy. laughs> well, he's not quite not quite maybe. Yeah, he's not quite that level of uh, of, of crazy. But look, he's got when he starts to fight in the airport, he might get there. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got that level of of aggression to his game. Yeah, um, he, he's got the the willingness to, to to, and we've seen that against Newcastle when he played. You know, he's willing to get in pe people's faces and, and and have a go. So that he's if he can throw all that with the quality that we know that he has, he's gonna be he's gonna be brilliant for for years. Absolutely, and it's a good shot by Roger there. Ch even changes of formations can can be brought into next season with the the flexibility uh, you've got of the players you know that are available as well. But but yeah, hopefully Gordon, this injury won't. Take him out for a long period of time. So I think we will need him. You've rightly pointed out, Mark, and we're, we're going to talk about this more with the lads on Wednesday. Um, you know, the, the amount of games in April that there is to play, we're going to need this squad. Um, so if we can have Gordon available, you know, as as an option, I think he's going to be massively, uh, massively required, mate, in April because there's a hell of a lot of games, isn't there? Yeah. And and look, if he's out for two weeks, he's going to miss what one game. So you, you've got the yeah. international break for him to, to recover in that time. So it's not the worst thing in the world that he's missed a couple of games now. You'd far rather it now than, like you say, if you miss three weeks in April, it's nigh on six games. 
So yeah. there's there's a huge difference in that, and there is there are some games come coming where you you need the the, the squad at its you know at its fullest. Absolutely. Well, we're going to end on uh, on, on a breaking story, uh, which was the news coming out um, regarding Hillsborough. So obviously everybody knows what happened there. A lot of the guys in the comments might have even went to this game, but there, there were serious complaints made by the Newcastle United um, fan base regarding the, the safety of Hillsborough and how many fans were crammed in. You know, uh, we, we, we'd spoken to a few people who'd been there. And they said it was really uncomfortable. It was quite scary. But the the, the story broke, obviously, just in terms of the, um, the, the 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 kind of nuts and guts of this, really. <clears throat> so so it was concerns raised by the Newcastle United supporters who attended uh, the FA Cup third round, which sadly they knocked us out on uh, on the seventh of January. And uh, they're just saying that they can share the findings with um uh, the advisory or safety advisory group sag uh, which was called by sheffield council basically in a nutshell just to wrap it up mark is that the the capacity reduction in hillsborough now the upper west stand now has a further reduced capacity of 2400 which is down from the the reported 3200 as a result of this review um for a stand with a, a holding capacity of 4194 and the lower west stand now has a further reduced capacity of 1300 down from 1500 as a result of the recent review for a stand with a holding capacity of 2366 so basically you know without getting too much into this um sheffield wednesday adamantly and the, the fans i mean fucking weird absolutely weird the fans they were you know they were they were, they were um vociferously defending you know the fact that their ground was was brilliant. It's not. It's a fucking tin shed in the middle of Sheffield. I've been. It's not been updated since the fucking seventies or whatever, right? right? It's not. I was it's not say, a modern stadium. At, the last time I was there was nineteen ninety. It was the first season of Premier League. I, yeah, it, still the it still looks the fucking um, same. It still looks the fucking same as it did then. It's pretty much never changed. Um, yeah. And look, it's it is it is totally outdated. Um, Yes, and, and TV is that there were concerns raised. It's not the first time that they've been nope. raised either. Um, and, and the council have taken the decision to, to reduce it. I think you know, is if they if they come up though, Mark, if they come up right <clears throat> and they don't do anything about that ground, this won't be the first time this happens. No, I think if they're going to have that reduced capacity, they're going to have to that that's that's going to impact the. Sort of the gates, they're going to have to do something because they have to do something look, because they can't, they they can't cram in more fans like the Premier League game, they'll get roasted. God there. help them if they got the I mean, the, the Premier League, they, they'll have to do huge amounts of work to get that stadium yeah. just near usability. For you know, it, it's just it's so old, and it is. You know, we talk about places crumbling, it, it's not had anything spent on it for, for donkeys. You know, I mean, Sheffield Wednesday have struggled massively financially, haven't they? Yeah, and, and I, fe- and I they, feel for them for that because they've had a bad, yes. they've had a bad run of luck over the years. But but the, the fans have made such a pricks of themselves. I know you said the C word there, well, YouTube ban. Um, they've made such pricks of themselves over this whole scenario. It's like your ground is not safe for the everybody knows Newcastle United travel in numbers, don't they? We travel in massive numbers. Look, look, look at look at Trafalgar Square for fuck's sake. We travel in huge numbers, right? They should have known what they were getting into that ground, and that ground was not safe, man. Somebody there was asleep behind the wheel and, and, and didn't, you know, didn't check, didn't check the the risk assessment, in my opinion, mate. And of all the grounds to do it, ha, exactly, man. Do you know what I, I look? I, the the blessing is that that nothing serious happened. Yeah, um, thankfully, thankfully, but. Look, they, they've got. They're going to have to do something about it. if they want to maintain their, their actual capacity. They're going to have to do something about it. They're going to need investment. It's really difficult in the position that they've been in. They have. I mean, yeah, they've been away from the league for for for, Long the time. for, for donkeys. Um, so that the money isn't there for them. But uh, you know, if they if they can start to get challenging in back in the championship and challenging again, maybe they will have the money to spend on it. And look, I've I've always liked Sheffield Wednesday. Um, I genuinely always liked them as a, as a club when they were in the Premier League. It, it would, they were always a, a good club to play against. Um, they always, it was always a, a, a good, fun club. Um, yeah. with unfortunately, with it, with a, in terms of their ground, with a tragic history, there's that sense of, of, of history with them. Um, 
but they, yeah, I think the, the obviously the right this decision and the fact I mean when you, you go into somewhere like that, when you've got one access point, when you've got one tunnel that provides the access to, to that's what they did, that's what Lee's saying there. Things. One tunnel, a single tunnel, man. That is just ridiculous. Such poor design. Um, and, and was just asking for asking for trouble. And when you don't manage it properly, I mean you can you can use one tunnel if you manage it properly. Because it wasn't managed properly at that point, and, and it but was it's out, just it's outdated. That's the problem. It's outdated. Yeah. It's not been it's not been you know had any modifications to it over the years. I mean, St James's Park was light years ahead of where it was when we first you know did what we did to it and extended it level seven and all that. You know, we we've had a ground that is is been able to facilitate the old managers lack or sorry, the old owners lack of investment because it was already way ahead of itself. But these grounds like Hillsborough. I mean, why do they think like you know Spurs have moved out of White Hart Lane and and Arsenal moved out of Highbury because it was full, you know the old stadiums you know you, you couldn't do the modifications you needed to so it was easier just to build a new stadium and, and yes it, it's it's easy to say because they had investment and obviously Sheffield Wednesday didn't and I'm not trying to stick the boot in the Sheffield Wednesday there but but I mean you know as some of the guys have said and you said Mark as well of all the grounds to to not to, to to take a bit of a a bit of a shoulder shrug and view on safety. This is not the ground, mate. This was never going to be the ground. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I know that. The, I mean, the fans were, were very vocal afterwards when Newcastle. They were, fans, and they're still are tonight. They still are tonight. And, yeah. and they've really done it on on online again tonight. But yeah, you know, they they made the right, the sensible decision in bringing that number down to to avoid anything like this happening again. But absolutely, surely for a club that they've got to look at the future. That's the next step is to is to to invest it in that in that ground and, and, and get it back up to back up to spec. It'll cost a lot of money. I, I am aware yeah. of that, um, but that 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 really has to happen. But the, the better to do it because next time they might not be so lucky. You know what I mean? And then and then then there's a serious problem. So you know it, it it's it's the right thing to do. You know. So I think Sheffield Wednesday fans. I know you're a bit pissed off and you feel a bit victimized, but you need to just think about the bigger picture. You know, so and, and and just think about the safety of of not just the away fans, but your own supporters as well. And you know, and 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 try and do the right thing, really. And hopefully, this this will help you do it. So you know, that's us all pretty much wrapped up. I think, Mark, for for this week. Thank you so much to all the guys in the comments. Always helps the episode flow when you guys bang in your uh, comments and thoughts as well. We always love engaging with you. Um, I'm going to be back on Wednesday with the boys. Mark is not. He's having a night off as Mark on Wednesday. So uh, he'll be he'll be kicking back. He'll be locking that cat away somewhere so it doesn't cause any more carnage. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure about that. But, uh, but yeah, so we'll be back on Wednesday live at 7, guys. So make sure you come back and join us forevermore then. As I mentioned at the start, if you're new to the channel, you've just discovered us tonight. Great to have you on board. Consider subscribing. Hit that button, come and join us. It's all free content and ever more. We're on over two and a half thousand subscribers. And if you could, please like the video. I remembered Mark, I'm getting better. Like the video and it gets around YouTube and it really helps the, the channel grow. So until then, let's keep supporting that team. We'll call United. Brilliant win at the weekend. Let's hope we we'll get another one against Forrest as well. Have a great night, guys, and we'll catch you later. Take care, guys. Good night.